Hey, Swift UI enthusiasts. Welcome to a deep dive into creating Facebook like reactions in Swift UI. This tutorial is extensive. Let's start by setting up the reaction enum. This enum will represent the different reactions we want to create. We're defining an enum with cases representing different reactions and an associated image name for each. I've already added emoji icons to assets. Now, let's dive into the reaction button. This is where the magic happens. Here, we're setting up the reaction button Swift UI view, complete with state variables for managing reactions and a flexible content closure. Let's discuss state variables. We're using the state property wrapper to manage the visibility of reactions and track the selected reaction. These state variables control the visibility of the reactions view and store the currently selected reaction. Now, let's talk about content. We're using a view builder to allow customization of the button's appearance. This content closure takes a reaction as a parameter and returns a custom view. We use the where clause to restrict the generic content type. Reaction handling is crucial. We've added a callback closure to notify the parent view when a reaction is selected. This callback is optional, allowing users of the reaction button to react to changes as they see fit. Let's discuss initializers. We've created an initializer to set up our reaction button with the necessary parameters. This initializer takes the callback and content closure as arguments, allowing customization. Now, Let's update our preview to reflect the changes we've made to the initializer. Let's add some content to our reaction button within the preview. Now, let's move to the body of our reaction button where the main button resides. We're setting up the main button in the body, toggling reactions on tap. Let's add content and actions to our button. Let's enhance our button with an overlay. The overlay sets up additional views on top of our button, creating space for the reactions. Now, let's add an H stack inside our overlay to arrange our reaction buttons. To efficiently create multiple buttons, let's use for each loop. We're iterating through our reaction enum, using for each to create individual reaction buttons. Let's dive into the code to create individual buttons for each reaction. Let's add content and actions to our button. This button handles the reaction selection logic hiding reactions and toggling the selected reaction. Let's make our buttons more informative by adding labels. This code sets up a label for each reaction button, including an image and a text label. Let's ensure our buttons have consistent dimensions. We're setting a fixed frame size for our reaction buttons. Adding a bit of color to our buttons can make them pop. This code sets the background color based on whether the reaction is selected. Let's add some flair to our buttons by giving them a circular shape. This line clips the button to a circular shape, giving it a clean, rounded appearance. Now, let's enhance the overall appearance of our reactions bar. These lines add padding, a white background, rounded corners, a subtle shadow, and an offset to our reactions bar. Let's add some smooth animations to our reactions bar. This code adds a fade animation to our reactions bar, making it appear and disappear smoothly. Now, 
let's bring our individual buttons to life with some animation. Here, we're applying an opacity animation to our individual reaction buttons inside the for each loop. The button will fade in or out based on the value of show reactions. We're using the ease and out easing function and a slight delay for a more natural effect. Let's bring some dynamic movement into play with rotation animations. This line introduces a rotation animation to our buttons. When show reactions is true, the button remains unrotated, 0 degrees. When it's false, the button rotates 45 degrees around the z-axis. The rotation at effect function provides a smooth 3D rotation effect. Now, let's create some dynamic movement with offset animations. This line controls the vertical offset of our buttons. When show reactions is true, the button remains at its original position, offset of 0. When it's false, the button moves down by 5 units on the y-axis. This creates a smooth up and down animation effect. We're applying the ease and out easing function, which starts slow, speeds up in the middle, and slows down again at the end. The delay parameter ensures that each button starts its animation slightly after the previous one, creating a staggered and more visually appealing entrance. All right, Swift UI pioneers, that concludes our deep dive into creating the reaction button with some captivating animations. We covered everything from setting up our reaction anoom to adding dynamic movements with opacity, rotation, and offset animations. I hope you've enjoyed this journey into Swift UI intricacies. But remember, this is just the beginning. Swift UI offers endless possibilities for creativity and user interaction. If you found this tutorial helpful or if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Swift UI tutorials, tips, and tricks. Thank you for joining me today. Happy coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.